Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophy Nut and welcome back to Bloodborne. Yes, still Bloodborne, because I did mention in the last episode that there were a few loose ends in this DLC and this game just keeps on giving. So I did some research and I've checked up on everything I still need to do. Uh, first things first, you might have seen that I lost a bit of health. Uh, that's because I had to track back to the first lamp, which I apparently did never activate. So. There we go, that's all fixed. So one of the first things I want to do is get back to the tunnel I missed with the Gatling Gunner. Because that guy is gonna die. Okay, so you can just walk past those spiders mostly. And then there's that tunnel again where I died to that Gatling Gunner. So let's try this again. The main annoying thing of course is that he stuns you with that Gatling Gun. And I can't see fucking shit. Yep, there he goes. Whew. And the Gatling gun. So, I had to spam him a bit, but keep him in a corner, and he's not able to counterattack that quite efficiently. So, let's see what else is in here. You know what? First, I'm gonna show you a few things, because I missed something when I uh, defeated the Orphan of Calls. Because we got a weapon. The Cos Parasite is actually the only purely arcane weapon. So, when the carcass of Cos washed up on the coast, its insides were teeming with tiny parasites, unlike any found in humans. This atypical weapon can only be clasped tight and swung, but a Cos Parasite is said to stimulate phantasms inhabiting the Lumen Wood. So, if we equip that, it kind of looks gross. Because it's uh, embedded into my arm. Okay, never mind. I don't seem to be able to equip that properly. So maybe I'll check that out later. And then the other thing was the Gatling gun that we just got. This is a highly customized portable version of the stationary Gatling gun operated by the old hunter Jira in Old Yarnum. It was the weapon of choice of the youngest of Jira's three companions. The Gatling gun boasts exceptional rapid firing functionality, but is considered a cumbersome weapon due to its excessive weight and insatiable consumption of quicksilver bullets. So yeah, nothing too uh, spectacular about that description. I'm gonna use the torch here, a lot of dead people. And an item. Bloodstone chunk. And then... The most annoying thing of all, there is actually a blood-starved beast in this cave. So uh, you might remember that as one of the bosses in Blood Boy. And there's more. So I'm gonna try and take the little ones out first. Because this is otherwise going to be a very annoying fight. So that's all the ads. I don't really know if it has the same effect as the boss fight. Without the lantern, it's pretty much undoable. 
Because you can't see shit. That was a uh, bad. And there it goes, okay. It didn't have any of the special poison effects it has as a boss fight, so that's another blood gem. I'm almost out of blood vials, though. And another weapon, the amygdala arm. More shards, more shards. And probably, maybe some blood vials, thank you. And another chunk. Okay, I thought I heard something. <laughs> Never mind, so there's another item in here and that just leads back into the same cave. So that's this cave. I'm gonna check out the amygdala arm for a second. The arm of a small amygdala great one. Strictly speaking, the amygdala arm is no trick weapon of any sort, but certain madmen wield them like clubs. Starts as a large tough blunt weapon formed of bone, but when extended the hand quivers as if it were still alive. So, equipping this thing, I'm gonna step outside for a bit, yeah, it's pretty cool. So, it looks like a club, acts like one, very heavy one, but when done like this, you get a sort of tentacle-like whip attack, which is uh, pretty cool, but I think mainly again for strength builds. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think... It's mainly for strength builds. Yeah, again, another weapon mainly focused on strength. So that was this cave. That was the first thing I wanted to show you guys. And girls, of course, if any girls are watching. So for the second part, um, you might have already seen this, but there is a secret in the water well. So we're gonna go back to the fishing hamlet where we are now. Not really fond memories of this place, but hey. Kill all the fish people. So, I specifically did this at a time where I uh, spend all my blood echoes, because uh, this is not going to be fun and probably will take a few tries. So, you can see one of those shark ogres, fish ogres, whatever you want to call them, on the ceiling there. He will not attack. The one we need to worry about is the one on the left there. Uh, so, well, gonna try this. Yeah, okay. Okay. That's a great start. Okay, I'm gonna keep this thing in between us. Oh my god, there it goes! Fuck you! Okay, that one's pretty easy actually. Well, one thing I noticed 
so the, the second one only drops down when the first one is at one third of its health. But I got a feeling that when I was fighting him here and he was below one third, he was trying to get to the other side of the pillar. And with me blocking him, he couldn't get there, scoring me some free hits, which was very handy. Okay, so we got the Rakujo, I think it's called. I'm gonna even equip it. So this is the hunter weapon wielded by Lady Maria. So that's also something I really wanted, actually. A trick sword originated in the same country as the Canehurst Chikage, uh, only uh, implying that Lady Maria also came from Canehurst. Only this sword feeds not of blood, but instead demands great dexterity. Lady Maria was fond of this aspect of the Rakuyo, as she frowned upon blood blades, despite being a distant relative of the Queen. Again, another pointer to that, also her pale skin indicates as much. One day she abandoned her beloved Rakuyo, casting it into a dark well when she could stomach, stomach it no longer. So that's also where we found it. It's weird that the item description uh, talks about her uh, hating it because, uh, uh, liking it because it doesn't, didn't use blood. While well, she did use it with blood magic when she was fighting us. Uh, you cannot get to those winter lanterns from here. That's uh, only available in the area where we got the elevator towards the orphan of course. So that's the second thing I wanted to show you and I'm actually going to start using that weapon. But first we'll need to head back to the hunt stream to upgrade that little thing. So I am skipping over a few minor side routes because uh, I only, I'm only going to show the things that uh, can give you a few nice things in your equipment. So let's fortify the Rakuyo because as you can see here the Rakuyo is mainly dexterity. So that's another really good weapon for me. So fortifying it with bloodstone shard. I'm going to use that blood rock on it. So that now is, as we check that out, the blade of the burial blade is 160, and the Rakuyo is now 164. So if I switch around my gems a bit, so with my blood gems in place, I get another 344 physical added to that, which makes this one formidable weapon. So I'm gonna do a bit of an experimentation here. I'm gonna show you a bit of the move set of this thing. So, as we've seen in the battle with Lady Maria, you can slash this. And there's some trusting attacks in between, which are really handy. So trusting with the back end of the weapon. The heavy attack is a trust. If you charge it anyway, and if you just slash it's a heavy slash. And then transforming it, you got double blades. So actually increasing the attack value even more. And uh, the heavy attack, there seems to be no heavy attack. So apparently in uh, this mode, it doesn't have a heavy attack. It has, however, a special attack when you use its gun form, as you would say. So you can spin around a bit when you do that, so L2, that's pretty nice. And then we have the transformation attacks, so just a thrust by putting the blade back in place, and the other way around is just a double slash. Okay, pretty, pretty nice. So that's going to be our weapon of choice from now on instead of the burial blade. You, you might ask yourself why this one instead of the burial blade? Well, for the very simple reason that I can add elemental effects to the Rakuyo and not to the burial blade. So that's the simple explanation for that. So, moving on. For our third assignment, I've spawned back at the underground corpse pile. You know, the arena I spent quite a lot of time in trying to defeat Ludwig, which whose head is still here on the floor. Hi, guy. But we received a key. Key to the inner chamber of the cell below the Grand Cathedral. The innermost chamber of the underground cell holds a lone madman. He wears a beast hide and rings a bell that emits no sound. 
Unending death awaits those who can hear the sound of this bell. That's the same guy who has been invading our world a few times now. Uh, most prominently in the fishing hamlet. So now we can hear that bell again. We've seen this guy before. So let's open this. Huh. I thought I would be able to open this. Okay, apparently not. Oh, there he is. guy and there we go down he goes okay there he goes so that's the third time we've beaten him greater's testimony so that's the fancy hat he wears Raider's testimony, the scalp of a horrific cleric beast, indicating that Hunter Braider, a healing church assassin, had killed a compatriot. Afterward, he wore his ally's own scalp and hid himself away deep below in his cell. The church provided him with a single soundless bell of death to ensure their secrets would be kept. So yeah, he should be somewhere in here. Can I open this? Still can't open this. There's another way, isn't there? Yeah, here. There we go. Well, well. Look who's here. Welcome to my quarters. I've never entertained a guest before. Are you going to kill me? After all you've done, kill me. As if to right your wrongs. <laughs> so this is Braider. The Healing Church assassin we've seen a few times, but this time in the flesh. So I can hear that bell, so it's not really soundless for me. What is it? Aren't you going to kill me? Or perhaps beg my forgiveness? Well, leave off. What's done is done. <laughs> Okay then. What is it? Oh, bad well. I think uh, normally you should ask you a question if you haven't already beaten orphan, the orphan of calls. But I am gonna kill him because uh, that stops him spawning everywhere else. So uh, changes. There we go. Such is the nature of man. <laughs> or as they say in Fallout, war never changes. <laughs> Goodbye, old man. <laughs> and he drops an item, the blood letter, his personal weapon. I'm gonna check that one out as well. The demented hunter weapon brandished by Braider, the healing church assassin. The blood letter assumes its true and terrifying form after it draws upon blood from the inner reaches of one's body and soul. This is the only effective means of expelling painted blood. Or so Braider, isolated in his cell, continued to believe. So uh, I'll quickly equip this thing. Oh, I can't. I don't have enough blood tinge, so never mind. I wanted to show you the moveset, but hey. That's another 
one down. So, um, we also have that man banging his head against the wall. That's also a hunter. Uh, that went slightly mad. But you can't really access him for now, I think. Maybe you can, but... Well. Not for now, anyways, so... I don't think you can do anything specific with him either, so... Okay, on to the next bit. So, next bit. We need to go to the research hall. Um, so there has been a lot of changes here since we... Uh, well, pulled the stairs up. Um, we can't even start back up here for now, so... I'm gonna try and finish the Blood Saints uh, questline here. So she asked me last time for more of that brain fluid, which we'll try and get for her. If I drop down on this staircase... Kill that guy. Not necessary, but... go make a bit of space now we can access this little alcove over here which we couldn't reach before and access the lock shield so another shield which aren't really used in Bloodburn. I'm gonna check if I'm not about to get killed so the lock shield it's a lot better shield than the wooden shield and uh, it's extremely handy for blocking uh, magic attacks. So, an artisanal shield crafted with blue glass. Originally used to safeguard the leader presiding over a sacred healing church ceremony and later supplied to tomb prospectors, in particular those exploring the labyrinth of Iz. The blue is fashioned after a lake and the shield greatly reduces all forms of non-physical damage. So any magical damage is greatly blocked by this shield. Uh, handy for a few boss fights. Uh, especially those with magic attacks that can one hit you. So indicating again the importance of a lake. Uh, an idea that shields you from magical damage. So what else has changed? So if we continue up the staircase and start eliminating the crazy people again one by one. Watching out for traps. We get to this item, which is just a more quicksilver bullets. And I don't think I entered this area yet. Okay, yeah. I think I could see that one time. Another patient with an amygdala arm. So this one got out of its chair. And there's the underground cell key. So that should open... Oh yeah, that should open the, the, the cell of the guys downstairs. Great. Well, I must say, I kind of like this. I'm gonna keep it. Looks gruesome. So, once you've taken the two elevators back up... What are these three guys doing? They're laughing really hard, okay. Okay, there goes one. So I think the lumps in that room don't work. So we need to go up the entire staircase back to the rafters. Oh, is there a chest here I didn't open? It? Yeah, because I never came back. Let's open this up. And then there we find another blood gem. Sorry, I missed that. Uh, 
and then you can see him over there at the end of the oh, okay. the end of the rafters. I missed that the last time. There's another one of those talking lumps. So slash it. And you'll get another piece of brain fluid. Okay. Okay. Mini heart attack. It would get me down easier, but rather I not. And back to Adeline, we can give her some more brain fluid. Please. I beg of you, please. I need it. Please bring me brain fluid. I need your help. There you go. Yes, that's it. Let me have it. That's the grossest sound ever. Oh, I can hear it. Yes. The sound that guides me. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Thank you. Thank you so much. You have saved me. Take this charm. Lady Maria gave it to me, but it is all I can offer, other than my own blood. So, the balcony Please, key. Please, do not abandon me. So let's check that out, right? We've been staring at that closed door for ages now, so... I want that! Someone. Seeing your eyes? No. 